Let's go. So, um, with me today is uh, Mariana Rojas, and a preeminent well-being researcher. Um, Mariana, can you tell me uh, what you see as your main contributions to the field of well-being? Well, basically, I've been working from Latin America, and I think uh, that's important uh, because there was I started doing well-being research about 15 years ago. There was no research from Latin America. And so I would say that doing research in Latin America rather than in the Anglo-Saxon world mm -hmm. implies uh, identifying new drivers, new factors that are important. So my main contribution is probably to, to do research from a region which is not uh, part of the most uh, research mm -hmm. that was being doing. Very good. Uh, uh, and to introducing and talking about concepts that are important in Latin America and not as important in the rest of the world, at least in the European Anglo-Saxon uh, part of the, the world. Very good. Can you tell me your, um, your current title and institutional affiliation? Um, professor of Economics at the Latin American Faculty of Social Science, which is placed in Mexico City and which is basically a research institution for graduate studies mm -hmm. in social science in general and with branches in many Latin American countries. Very good. And um, can you uh, share with us some of these uh, uh, intriguing differences in, uh, 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 I assume, are you studying uh, uh, Mexicanos? Are you studying other Latin American cultures? What, what are the differences there that need to be attended to from more traditional Western cultures, Anglo cultures? Yes. Usually when we talk about Latin America, my research is mostly, I'm originally from Costa Rica. Ah. So, uh, a very I'm, happy country, I understand. Uh, a very happy country. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to uh, uh, about that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll do research about Mexico, Costa Rica, but uh. Latin America in general. Mm. Um, Which we, other countries? Uh, uh, when we talk about Latin America, we basically talk about all those countries in the American continent that speak uh, Latin language. Mm -hmm. That means basically French, Portuguese, and Spanish. Mm. And then um, you have uh, all the, the countries like Argentina, Brazil, they speak Portuguese, uh, Mexico, Colombia, uh, and also some countries in the Caribbean part, like Cuba, uh, oh. Dominican Republic, and Haiti. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so, so there are many, like 18 countries that we consider part of Latin America. Um, what do you see as um, some of the... Uh, major practical implications of your work? Basically what we have found uh, is that Latin American countries are very happy. Actually you already mentioned Costa Rica shows up mm -hmm. when we ask about life satisfaction. Uh, Costa Rica shows up as, at the top. No? Mm -hmm. But we also have Panama, Venezuela, Mexico. They have very high life satisfaction, happiness measures but also uh, they have abnormally high satisfaction measures mm -hmm. for their income. And then the idea is that uh, there is something in Latin America uh, that explains happiness mm -hmm. uh, and that goes much beyond income. And my point is that there are some lessons to be learned from Latin America if we are talking about increasing happiness in the world. Yes. Um, well, it's a very uh, fascinating well, finding. So how do you explain it's that a difference? Lesson, and, and we have like two main explanations mm -hmm. for, for Latin America besides income. Uh, one is the role of families and extended families in general. Not mm -hmm. only the nuclear family, but extended families, social networks. Uh, Latin America is mostly a relational society. Hmm. Uh, rather than a materialistic society. Mm -hmm. And the, the measures of GDP per capita, um, measures of progress based on um, how much you are producing, uh, how much uh, you can consume, are measuring wealth 
in a dimension that probably is more important in the Anglo-Saxon world, mm -hmm. but which is not as relevant mm -hmm. in Latin America. Mm -hmm. So one of the factors that we think is important, and, and, and we can everybody can learn from that, is that human relations matter. And human relations matter not only because they contribute to, to economic growth, they have intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. They value because people get the satisfaction of uh, psychological uh, needs, they get uh, emotional support, they, they get this um, huge support from families, members. That's a, a wealth that we have in Latin America mm. and that we are not measuring in the national accounting system, uh, the wealth of human relations. Yes. And another important factor that we have in Latin America is uh, using time mm -hmm. collectively. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not everything is about working and uh, producing and making money. Mm -hmm. It's also about having time to enjoy life mm -hmm. and having parties, having mm -hmm. uh, gatherings with friends. Mm -hmm. So that's also a major issue in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And our argument is that um, if we take the indicators of progress from, from the Anglo-Saxon war, yes. we will be missing those areas that are important. Yes, yes. And furthermore, we will be uh, doing policy that rises our indicators, but not our well-being. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's why uh, I think this research uh, is important, and uh, we can learn a lot about Latin America. And uh, that's what we, we, we are uh, trying to advance in the international agenda. Well, it seems like a wonderful contribution. And uh, you seem to, uh, uh, so for the lessons to Anglo culture, um, uh, I think part of what you're implying then is that there may be less of an emphasis on extended family relationships there and uh, more of an emphasis on small nuclear family and less of an in, a, a focus on time for relationships as a value in and of itself and not just trying to get ahead or make money all the time. Uh, is, am I putting words in your mouth or is uh, that correct? Uh, that's exactly what I mean, uh, probably that you need a balance in life. I see. That mm -hmm. your life is very precious and mm -hmm. not everything is about all your time, your attitudes, mm -hmm. your mind, focus on increasing GDP at the national level mm -hmm. or in uh, rising your income at the personal level. But you also have to think about uh, that we are much more than consumers. Yes. We are persons, human beings. Yes. And human beings have family, have uh, passions, mm -hmm. interests, hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, we have to take care of our health. Mm -hmm. That's very valuable. Yes, yes. So, so that's part of... Um, a satisfactory, a happy life. Yes. And um, the fact that we have some Latin American countries that perform quite well, mm -hmm. especially for compared to the the income level they have and the um, ecological um, footprint mm -hmm. they are producing. Yes. Uh, that means that there is a lot to learn from Latin America. There is a way to have a happy life that does not cost to the planet, and that uh, we can enjoy all together, especially in this planet that is mm -hmm. very limited. Okay. Yes. Well, um, that's a tremendous uh, contribution that you've made and a uh, tremendous lesson that we can take. Um, I also uh, am reminded of some of the, the current trends in the research where they break happiness up into positive affect negative affect, life satisfaction, and uh, particularly the positive affect, um, according to some researchers, is very closely tied to positive relationships. Is that not true? Um, well, it shows up, but not only the affective, also what I call the evaluative part. Oh. Uh, and even the sensorial or hedonic mm -hmm. part is related also to the family. When, when oh. you have families, uh, the evaluative part of life is not only about uh, material standards, mm. but also about how your kids are performing, 
Mm-hmm. What are your goals for them? Are they mm-hmm. uh, getting uh, grades in the school, yes. good grades? Yes. So the family is everywhere, not only in the affective part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and okay. Let me show you, tell, tell you about another study yes. we have. Uh, people who are ill, physically mm-hmm. ill, they are sick. And we find uh, that it is not the same to be ill than to suffer from an illness. Mm-hmm. There is a difference. You can be clinically ill, but suffering from an illness is completely different. Mm. And we found out that people who have family support Mm -hmm. suffer less from an illness uh, in terms of of Amazing, very amazing. Than than people who are not uh, surrounded by Uh family. Uh So there Mm -hmm. are many ways Mm -hmm. That because we are persons, uh, we grew up in society and yeah. families, so the family is there everywhere. Yes, yes. And um, uh, probably in modern times, uh, people are used to move. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that uh, the Anglo Saxon culture is about uh, at 18 you leave home. Yes. And probably you see your parents once, twice a year for, for Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Uh, that's not what happens in Latin America, mm. you have gatherings every weekend, mm. you visit your parents, mm-hmm. you, you, you have your cousins. So these extended family and extended activities um, provide well-being through different sources. Yes, Affective, yes. evaluative, and even hedonic in the sense of yes. sensorial experiences. Yes. Well, it's, uh, it's very fascinating and important work. Um, can you give us... Uh, your opinion about um, what we can do to keep this field of well-being research alive and vibrant? Are there things we can do to to keep this uh, research going? I think it it is very important uh, not to become detached from people themselves. Uh, The main topic here is that we are talking about something that is not an academically constructed area. Mm -hmm. The, we're talking about something that people experience every day. Mm-hmm. And I usually say that in order to test whether we are really talking about well-being or not, mm-hmm. it's to go and talk to your grandma. Ah. If you can talk to your grandma <laughs> about well-being, then you are talking about something that matters to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, your grandma, which by that I mean an ordinary person yes. who has a long life. Uh, yes. Uh, if we are talking about well-being, we should be talking about something that is familiar at the well-being level to everybody, uh, to be attached to, to people. Mm-hmm. If we are talking about what produces well-being and sophisticated models, that's okay to explain well-being, mm-hmm. but not to to, to, to talk about well-being itself. Yes. Uh, and so I think in the long run, if we are able to keep the concept at that level, mm-hmm. something that is close to people because we're talking about what they experience yes. every day, then there will be an enormous demand. Actually, uh, politicians are becoming interested hmm. in this concept because they know that if people people uh, feel uh, and have this sense of well-being, mm-hmm. uh, that relates to their performance. Uh, are they mm-hmm. doing good or not? Mm-hmm. And, and they also think in terms of votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we run uh, another <laughs> study. Uh, yes. We have another study about the probability for the official party of being re-elected. Mm-hmm. And what factors influence the probability of the official party? of uh, re-election, and these kind of subjective well-being measures are very important. You know? uh, so politicians should focus on subjective well-being because it also means increasing the probability of re-election for, for the party. Oh, that, that's an yes, important yes. part. But, but uh, in general, it is not only about policy in the, the public arena, but also in private arenas. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, entrepreneurs, business people should worry mm. about uh, happiness, subjective well-being, because this is related to productivity of mm-hmm. workers, uh, to building loyalty of their clients, mm-hmm. uh, satisfied clients mm-hmm. come more often. Uh, and also, it's about the, the 
social, uh, uh, the, the, the civic society in general, mm -hmm. uh, groups, movements, uh, it, because this is a folk concept, something that comes from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. uh, if we keep that, mm -hmm. it is something that attracts people. Yes. That they don't see as academicians sitting there in a, yes. a university yes. talking about very sophisticated, mm -hmm. obscure, opaque, opaque yes. uh, concepts. Yeah. No, they, they are seeing this as something that touches them. Yes, yes. And if we manage to, to have that, that level of analysis, uh, measuring happiness, well-being at that level, and talking mm -hmm. about well-being in the words that people usually use, I think there is a lot of potential. Well, um, I, I thank you for your, uh, your work and the wisdom that you've uh, shared with us today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was fantastic.